We're coming to our uh, guest, Brother Timothy Martin. How are you, brother? Are you there? We're going to talk a little bit about a great man who has just passed on from uh, from earth to heaven. He lived to be about 90 years old, uh, the former spokesman. Uh, so uh, did you, you want to, I know you don't know much about him, so I guess you're going to have to interview me. I'll be with you going to have to do yeah, yeah, the, this brother's name was Ronald Brandt, and he's quite famous in alternative energy, and he was the spokesman for the ministry from the whole, from Nikola Tesla's day. Uh, he actually worked with Nikola Tesla for two years uh, when he was a young man. Tesla was an old man, uh, and he's, uh, he, he did a lot of, the ministry did a lot of stuff. He was a great engineer, a fantastic engineer, and a man of God, and a prophet. Uh, he, he'd been through amazing stuff in his life. Uh, many near near death experiences, uh, where the Lord in the Scripture it says, "Many are the afflictions of the righteous man, but the Lord God delivers him out of all of them." And Brother Ron was actually ran over by a D8 cat one time. Uh, just to show you about afflictions of the righteous man, he was he was trying to help the guy get the cat running. The D8 cat, big one of the biggest cats at the time, caterpillar. You know, that's, you know they use them for great, you know for anything basically. A big push pusher. Uh, Caterpillar uh, was a brand, and V8 is one of the biggest models they had. And he was trying to—he was helping the guy, and the guy told him he had the, uh, the spark retarded or whatever, and he didn't. And uh, when Ron went to start it, it kicked so hard that it threw him off the machine and and, and ran over him both, uh, and split his head wide open. And they uh, ran completely over him; his head split wide open. And they drug him. The other guys on the job drug him up under a tree, and uh, they thought he was dead. He was dead. He was out of his body. He was up in the air, looking down at his body, and looking at watching these people. You know, they drug him up, and and uh, he decided while he was there, you know, he's only like 40 years old or so, he's 45 somewhere in there. He decided that he still had a lot of work to do. While he's up, and it wasn't time for him to go to heaven yet. And so he went back into his body. He just basically said, I'm going back into my body. And he went back in. And here's his brain, literally, his head was split open, brain's laying out on the ground, literally. And he reaches up and grabs his brain and sticks it back in his head and pushes his head together with both hands. And I don't know if I'm coming over on video or not, but anyway, he pushes his, pushes his head together with both, his skull, the skull together with both hands, and he, and he yells for the duct tape. It's a true story, and uh, they, the, all of them were shocked that he was alive because they all thought he was, he was dead, you know. And uh, and so one of them finally ran to get the duct tape, and they taped his hands and everything right all together, round and round and round, and took him to the hospital with his hands in there and everything. And uh, he walks into the emergency room like that, and uh, he said he couldn't see right because his eyes weren't lined up. The, the head didn't come together quite right, you know, and <laughs> the skull. <laughs> So he had to close one eye, you know, just so he could see, you know. Uh, but uh, okay, uh, so so Ronald Brandt, you know, that's funny because uh, I've seen that I've seen that name before. Uh, he's actually uh, I've I've seen some papers and things uh, of uh, free energy stuff that uh, maybe he had worked on uh, uh, before uh, yep. on the internet. Yep, so, absolutely. He's been with. Uh, he's, He's been in alternative energy uh, since he was just a young man. Even before he met Nikola Tesla, he was doing stuff uh, uh, on his own. And even I'd say I think his first first free energy device that he built, I think he was only, um, if I remember right, I think he was only eight years old, or maybe ten, somewhere in there. And he actually took it to school and demonstrated it. And it was a receiver. It's it's similar to the plans that we have up on. Um, uh, for the atmospheric electric accumulator, except that he didn't, in those days, they didn't have diodes, so he made his own diodes out of a piece of germanium, and so that's the difference. Uh, it, the more advanced version is the atmospheric electric accumulator, which people can order off of, off of our website, um, and uh, so anyway, that's, and the website's www.wits.ws, in case people don't know what that, any of the listeners don't know what the website is. But yeah, that was a free energy device that Ron had built when he was just eight or nine or ten years old, and he just basically got it from the Lord. He he's very very he's a very very gifted man in everything electrical and everything mechanical, and a lot of people have heard of him. You're right, and he actually demonstrated. He was the spokesman for the ministry. Uh, he didn't in those days the ministry was very secret, and he he actually. 
tried to discourage us from, from talking that the ministry even exists now. You know, the last two years the ministry has been known about. We've been talking about it, and people realize there's other people working together, a group of people working together for a better world, for world improvement. And uh, he was one of them that didn't really want us to go public in that way. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's a good brother in the Lord, and we love him, and we respect his wishes and so on. And that's probably why it, it did take so long for us to go public on that particular point. But yeah, extremely gifted, anything like Paul. He demonstrated an automobile that the ministry had built, he and the ministry had built back in the, uh, I remember right, it would have been the 50s, uh, 1950s to 1960s, somewhere in there. I, no, I'd say it happened somewhere, yeah, somewhere around the 50s or 60s. Uh, he demonstrated an automobile that ran on quantum energy, and that's the famous Brandt Tesla switch. Uh, you remember hearing about it, right, brother? Yeah, absolutely. I'm familiar with that. Uh, uh, in fact, I saw something uh, uh, quite a while ago, maybe, uh, oh gosh, it had been at least five years, maybe longer than that. Uh, I had seen a write-up about a, I think it was called a Brandt switch, actually, uh, which was a yeah. uh, similar to it, somewhat people call a Tesla switch. But I, I remember seeing something about a automobile that was outfitted with uh, uh, batteries and using this switch uh, uh, to run the automobile. I wonder if that was, uh, was that his? Yeah, that was it. That was the ministry's project. Uh, Ron Brandt, like I say, was the spokesman at that time, and uh, he demonstrated it for, I'd say, hundreds of people, and a lot of people were blown away because you could get in the car and drive it cross-country, you know, 500 miles, 1,000 miles, and, and check the batteries, and they were fully charged. They were actually boiling uh, so much you'd have to add water all the time from being charged. Dominant energy when you charge a battery, it boils really good. Uh, it's it's just even a small, even a, even a triple charge will boil batteries like you want. They're making hydrogen is what it's doing, and that hydrogen, of course, could run combustion engines uh, with with just a simple bath, so you don't get any acid, you know, into the into the engine, you know, simple water bath. But uh, that that is the basic concept. Uh, it has been around. A few people have tried to duplicate it and had had uh, success or limited success. And the the reason being is this is advanced quantum energy. Uh, all quantum energy stuff is advanced, and most people think it's some simple little circuit, and that's all they got to do. They don't understand there's different types of electrical fields and so on. And Ron never would tell anybody that. That was another thing. You know, we've. When I became spokesman, I pushed for more disclosure of more things, and so one of the things I've gotten permission to talk about is how dominant energy works and the fact that there are many other types of subatomic particles besides electrons that can do work and be useful in circuits. And that's one of the things that uh, Ron never talked about. And uh, but he's a good man. And, you know, Nikola Tesla didn't talk about it either. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, these right. are good people. They, they just have their rules and they're following them, and they believe. And maybe that was the leading of the Lord at that time. Uh, but the Lord is leading people on to greater revelation, greater information, a greater sharing, uh, and and a greater world. You know, a greater a greater future for mankind. That's where God's leading. Although the devil, of course, is working hard to lead everybody down the wrong path and get them to all go over a cliff together. You know, that's like true. But, but but I have to I have to say that every corner that you turn, you're starting to see more and more truth come out. More and more, uh, uh, you know, reveals are happening uh, everywhere. So uh, this is just another one. You know, the time has come that all these truths are coming out, it seems, or at least uh, many, many, many of them are. So, uh, well, well, see, that, that's interesting because I had actually uh, attempted to build a, um, a Tesla or a Brandt switch based on some of the uh, diagrams that I had seen. Uh, because when you when you start studying the circuit, it's like, well, this sort of makes sense. How come no one's tried this, you know? Uh, but I, I did uh, do a little bit of work on trying to replicate that, and I definitely had difficulty. The the, the switching did not – I tried to use solid-state uh, switches, and uh, the switching did not work as expected. Um, and that was confusing to us uh, because uh, it, it looks quite simplistic in the way it works, but when you have all the switching in place, um, we were we were getting odd results. We'd have uh, switches heating up, we'd have batteries discharging that we wouldn't think would be discharging. We'd, uh, you know, it was just, an, you know, the, the loads uh, would behave funny. Um, so, 
you know, not knowing any of the other components of the dominant energy fields and so forth, uh, there was a big piece that we were missing. Yeah, absolutely. And this is very common in free energy. People uh, are, are told or assume that it's, it's strictly a circuit and you just build the circuit and it's supposed to work. Right. And if you don't understand that there's certain fields that have to be established, uh, and those fields have to be impressed or permanent on certain devices in the circuit. You can you can literally program an inductor or a, or a transistor or impress or imbue the the field right into the right into the component. And and so you don't necessarily have to have a, a static generator or something like that to give you uh, the electret type field. And I say electret, it's not just standard electret. There's, there's three different dominant energy type electrets that need to be put into the field, into the system, and for it to work stable. But yeah, you were probably getting some of the effects, it's just that they were random because nothing was polarized correctly. Uh, and then, therefore, you got those odd results. And that's it's very common with all free energy systems, by the way. Uh, this is a big mystery that's... That, you know, the, only the ministry has it because they, back in the 1800s, Michael Faraday, 1811 approximately, 1815, somewhere in there, he discovered, 1820, he discovered dominant energy. And uh, the best minds in Europe spent, 50, and some of them in the United States, spent 50 years to get it perfected to where the practical usable device, the dominant energy fields do have to work together and be stable, and uh, and you know, and that's that's there's a lot of well, there's a lot to it. It's not it's not just simply a circuit like most people assume. Yeah, and that's and that uh, that is a big missing uh, piece of the puzzle when uh, when free energy wor uh, researchers are are just working on circuits and so forth. So when they're when they're not aware of these things, and uh, and many of them you really aren't even open to. Uh, going in that direction and thinking that there's something yeah. different. Um, uh, yeah. you're most missing... of them you ask, most yeah. of them you ask them, uh, you know, how many different kinds of electrical flows are there, and they'll say just electrons. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So this is a, uh, you know, this is this is pretty big news. Now uh, you, you mentioned that uh, uh, Ronald Brandt uh, knew Tesla personally. So I guess when he was a kid That's that. A... Uh, he he must have met Tesla, or uh, maybe well, he was yeah. trained by Tesla. Yeah, let me tell you the story. Uh, Ronald Brandt was uh, like like a lot of us. He was blessed to, to be on his own at a very young age. I think he told me he was twelve when he took his little brother, who was about nine or ten, and himself, and he left home and uh, he bought himself a car for twelve dollars. I think he said and. Uh, fixed it up, made some work, and they, they lived in that car for a couple of years. So he was 12 years wow. old, 13, 14, 15, working odd jobs, whatever he could do. Uh, and he'd been working on his own for, you know, since he was probably six or seven or eight years old. He'd been doing a lot of work, physical work, learning things and getting good at things. And, uh, and then when he was... Uh, 13, 14, 15, he decided to try to join the military. And, uh, he, of course, you have to be 18 to join the military. Uh oh, I think I think we lost you there. Can you hear hey, me? Do I, hear you. I hear you. Do you hear me? I hear you yeah. guys. Do you hear me? Uh, yeah. Start uh, start at the part where you're saying uh, uh, he joined the military and he had to be 18 to join the military. Yeah, you have to be 18 to join the military, and and you go ahead and interrupt me if if you think I lost you or you lose me again. Uh, but anyway, he. And so he got a bunch of IDs, different, you know, different ways he got IDs, you know, the social security numbers were easy to get and so on, and he'd lie about his age, and he got into the military, and he got kicked out the first three times because they found out how old he really was, but uh, when he was about 16, he finally got in permanently, 16 years old, and he was very brilliant with the electrical and mechanical things, so he got promoted to where he was the he was teaching electrical engineering in the days they didn't have electronics. He was teaching electrical engineering in the, for the military uh, when he was years old. And that's when he met Nikola Tesla. Uh, he because he, Ron was so bright he was put under Nikola Tesla on the Philadelphia experiment, on the Philadelphia project. Wow. And that's a wow. that's a whole other they worked on that for together for two years and then Tesla re resigned and left the project, detuned de everything. And the reason he did is because the military kept insisting that they use nuclear material. And Tesla knew if you use nuclear material in a dominant energy device, 
you're going to have lots of problems, including death and so on, and lots of instability. And and he he told Ron when he when he left, Tesla told Ron, he said, I know you're under orders to work on this, so you'll probably have to work on it and get it running. He said, if you do get it running, he said, do not be on the ship when you guys turn it on. And uh, wow. so when they finally when they finally did get it working, to her, they hired another guy that came in after Tesla quit, and he was the you know another independent contractor. But, but really, Ron was the brains behind that, of duplicating what Tesla had done and getting it working. It took another year or two. He delayed it as much as he could. But uh, when they were ready to turn it on, he, he faked sickness that day and, you know, stayed in the barracks or whatever, supposedly. But then he snuck in to watch the, what happened. So he wasn't, otherwise he would have been on the ship. And Tesla told him quickly, do not be on that ship because almost everybody will probably die, you know, in you know, a worst case scenario, you know. And sure enough, they turned that thing on, and he actually has some video. We're going to try to. Uh, there's a bunch of videos that he he got a copy of the military's video back then. Then video was just in his infancy, but the military had this on video, and I actually got to see it. And so we're trying to we're negotiating with Ron's relatives right now to try to get all that stuff that really belongs to the ministry to try to get it, uh, you know, back to the ministry. But uh, uh, he has video of the Philadelphia experiment when they turned that thing on. And wow. lightning come up, covered and covered the whole ship like lightning, like sh you know, sh shimmering of bright electrical, like an arc. Except it covers the whole ship, everything on the ship, and and it runs that way. And you hear this humming, and it runs that way for about, uh, oh, I'd say two or three minutes. And then you see this bright shimmering in front of the ship, and the whole ship goes invisible. And but you still still see this bright shimmering, and even that shimmering is going in and out. It's like it turns invisible or comes back, and then. Then you still see the impression in the water, and then the whole then the whole ship disappeared. It looks like it got sucked forward, and the whole ship disappeared. And the the story the story from the people on the ship that survived said that they got sucked into a wormhole. A huge wormhole appeared in front of the ship, and that wasn't planned. What they were trying to do was optical invisibility and possibly intangibility. What Ron says both opt both optical and radar invisibility and intangibility. So even if somebody were to shoot a missile at a ship in that condition, it would go right through the ship uh, and not and damage the ship. Uh, that's called intangibility, and that's according to what Ron so told me that they were trying to the Tesla and him were trying to do. And the reason the wormhole opened was because of the the all the radioactive material they had in the system and on the ship to power everything. Uh, it causes tremendous instability, and when the power levels get too high, then you'll wind up opening a wormhole and in and, and the dominant energy, the polar end of it. And, uh, and that's what happened. And that wormhole happened to be, most of them are a little bit magnetic, and that ship was a big iron piece of iron, so it sucked it right in uh, and literally bounced around in several places. It was seen in three or four different locations. And uh, the people on the wow. ship, of course, were screaming and yelling. There have been a number of movies about this, but. This is the actual uh, first hand or second hand uh, from from a guy that you know that engineered the project, worked on it as one of the chief engineers or the chief engineer or whatever. Ron and Jay Brandt. They bounced around, wound up coming back. Uh, well, wound up what happened? People were dying while this thing was bouncing around. People were getting fused in the ship, and it would phase in and out, and they were they were suffering, and they couldn't pull themselves free. Their arm was fused into the ship. Intangibility was happening in an unstable way, unstable way in the ship. People were fusing into the walls and into the hole, and, and they were jumping over the side. And finally, some guy grabs an axe and starts chopping up the main equipment. And and, and I don't remember who that was. I don't remember if he even told me. But uh, he grabs a fire axe. You know how they have fire axes on the ships in case of emergency, you know, all this. So it, when that happened, of course, everything shut down, and it created a backwards loop where everything got sucked back to the beginning point and uh, kind of like a vacuum in space time, you know, where everything got. And so they did the same three or four jumps that it just did. It did them backwards through space time and the thing wound up reappearing right there. And you say that on video too. It's gone for about 15 minutes. There's just nothing there and everybody's talking, where to go, you know, and all this, you know, is it just invisible? Or how come we don't see the water imprint, you know, because you could see, at first you could see this water imprint. People didn't know it went through a wormhole. At first, they they pieced that together after it came back, and some survivors. Uh, I guess about half the people were were dead or died within an hour or two after it came back, and there was about half that lived. But most of those had radiation sickness and radiation burns. Almost everybody on that ship died within five years or so, and uh, wow. so it's kind of kind of tragic. But that's the military for you, insisting that you, know, you do it in an unsafe manner. Uh, Tesla told them, Ron told them, and you know they just insist. <clears throat> 
So, uh, so Ron was probably fairly young when that uh, when that happened. I, I guess maybe in his early twenties. I don't think he was even in his early twenties. Uh, like wow. I say, he started started working with Tesla. You think he was about seventeen? So maybe nineteen. Well, maybe twenty. He may have been twenty, twenty-one when they did it. Um, he probably had a four-year enlisting. I, well, actually, he served after that too, so he'd be re-enlisted, I guess. Um, because he, uh, yeah, he told me about some of the other things they did. They did a number of top secret projects for the government and uh, a lot of different things, uh, quite interesting stuff. I uh, probably shouldn't talk about too many. I can talk about the Philadelphia experiment because that's pretty well known about uh, without getting it, without getting anybody in trouble, I think. But uh, did did uh, did uh, did Ronald work uh, in any you know non-military uh, applications after that? In other words, when did he go sort of uh, more? Um, you know, I guess uh, non-secret, or did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, you know, as you know, the ministry was kind of a semi-secret organization for 200 years, so he did keep it that way as Tesla had instructed him. Um, and so when he got out of the military, actually, the last, I don't know how many years he was in the military, So, but I do know the last few years were very boring or or empty times, so he built a number of free energy machines and tested them right there with, when he was still enlisted in the military, and he left them behind when he when he left the, the military uh, because of military property, you know, but he detuned them, of course, and just left them there. But uh, that, I'm guessing it would have been uh, in the mid-40s or late 40s when he got out of the military, 1940s. Um, um, so and then he did he did uh, the first thing of that everybody knew about was the electric car. But he did a number of projects quietly and secretly. Uh, as you know, we've been doing homes for people for 200 years for the super rich. So he did a few of those. Um, uh, and then of course the um, the ones that have been in existence since Stubblefield, they have to be worked on every now and then, maintain maintenance and so on. And so you know he was in charge of that. Uh, so there were projects ongoing. They worked on uh, a levitation device. Uh, there's also uh, some uh, airplane, uh, advanced airplane stuff that went on, uh, similar to the Philadelphia experiment. That was a government project that he took on after government project, after he got out of the military. So he would have been an independent contractor at that point um, on on that airplane stuff. Uh, but they were interested in making airplanes intangible and invisible also, and they did get invis radar invisibility out of that project. That would have been in the 1950s. Most people don't know they had radar invisibility. Uh, well, even nowadays, most people don't know they have radar invisibility, <laughs> but they do. They also yeah, have they, uh, Yeah, <laughs> I think they, they, they are trying to fool everybody with the, uh, the stealth uh, technology when they've had stuff way more advanced uh, many years ago. Yeah, yeah, way more advanced. And actually, if you go back all the way uh, to Tesla's time, Tesla and Keeley uh, worked together uh, on um, on the very top secret stuff that was for the super rich bankers, and that was anti gravity. It wasn't invisibility, but the invisibility did come along somewhere. Um, I don't know. You know, they, obviously they were experimenting with it by the 1940s, if not sooner. There was a guy. As invisibility, uh, and this guy was associated with the ministry. He did wind up getting hired for the super rich bankers. This was back about 1908. He demonstrated, I think it was in France. Uh, he's a scientist, engineer over there, uh, and he demonstrated a box that was like a closet that he would put on a special suit, and the, the front of the closet was open. And he would walk into this and flip a switch, and you couldn't see him at all. He was totally invisible, but he was standing right there. If he'd stick his hand outside the box, if you stick his hand outside the box, you could see the hand. But he'd put it back in, you couldn't see him at all. And this is a box that's open, uh, just in other words, like a freestanding closet with no door on the front. And that was that's optical invisibility, and that was perfected in 1908. Uh, that that type of wow. optical invisibility. And so these things have been worked on for a long time, and and more and more government agencies are getting a hold of it, and so on. Um, it's it's interesting stuff. That's really, really remarkable. Well, uh, what uh, I guess what kind of happened uh, in his later years? I guess uh, did he uh, was he uh, able to work on any projects here in the last uh, you know ten years or so? Or uh, I guess you you learned everything from him. Well, I didn't learn everything, but I learned a lot from him. He's a great man, and he learned a lot from Nikola Tesla, and he learned a lot from, uh, you know, Tesla learned a lot from uh, 
Uh, Keely? Field and, and Keely and, and Keely. Keely was very brilliant. Keely, Keely was never a spokesman, but he was definitely part of the ministry for many years. Uh, and you know, and you know, this, these guys, uh, you know, they were the, the great scientists of old and the great ministers, the great engineers of old. And uh, so I'm honored to be on that legacy. Uh, Ron did work on uh, a motor that he was interested in trying and giving away to humanity, uh, electric motor, uh, and some people have heard of the Brant motor. Uh, it's it's um, it it had limited success. I'll put it that way. It, it worked real good when he was there, but it was it was a polar device, and in his older years, he had forgotten how to make everything stable, um, basically, and so. Or if he didn't know how to make it stable, he uh, he didn't want to make it stable or something. I'm not sure what the exact deal was. Uh, he, he did, in his later years, the last five years or so, eight years, he, he did have dementia, but it would come and go. And so sometimes he was fine and rational, other times he wasn't. So, uh, you know, he's a good man, you know, and, and people get old, things happen. But as far as I know, he didn't have any major health problems when he died. He just left his body and went on to be with the Lord. And he had told me several times, that the next time he leaves his body, he's not coming back. He'd been out of his body probably 20, 30 times, and up until he was about 60 years old or so. And then he said after 60, he told me he said he'd never, if he left his body again, he's not coming back. And <laughs> so he, he was hesitant to leave his body again, he said, he, because of that. Uh, he said it's a lot better being able to just travel with thought, is what he called it, travel with thought. He said, you can just think about heaven, you can go to heaven. He said, you can think about Jupiter, you can go to Jupiter. He said, you think about wherever you want to go. He said, he's been to hell, too. He said, you think about hell, you go to hell. Uh, he, he's seen it all. He's seen it all. He told me about it. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you know, I guess uh, um, I guess his job was done here, and uh, so it's it's okay to leave now. Well, believe it or not, what he told me, and this is a, this is what he told me this morning once, this is absolutely from his heart, from his spirit, from the deepest part of his being. He He told me that, he said, when I get to heaven, he said, when I die, I'm going to go, and my body dies, I go to heaven. He said, he said I'm going to tell God, and I'm going to tell uh, the Lord. I don't know if he said the Lord or God. And he said, I'm going to tell God, he said, that I want to come back. He said, I want, him, I want him to send me back. I want another body. I want to come back. He said, and I said, why is that, Ron? And he said, he said, as long as the children of God are here, as long as the earth needs help, he said, I want to be here to help, is what he said. He said That's, uh, so he's up there right now having that conversation with God. Jesus, and, uh, and maybe he's taking a vacation for a few years. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna see if he can get him to send him back because he wants to he wants to help. Is what he, that's what he believes. You know, a lot of people Christians don't necessarily believe in reincarnation and all that, but uh, uh, you know, but this is what he believes. So you know, he's people are allowed to have their own spiritual ideas. It's it's not offensive to me in any way that somebody might believe a little differently than me, and I'm not sure whether. People don't come back sometimes. I don't know. You know, if people that claim to know everything, they're the ones that know the least, usually. Exactly, exactly. Well, I tell you, that's 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 dedication for you. If not only you'll devote one lifetime to it, but you'll come back and say, I, I'm, I'm helping again as much as I can. Yeah. He says, so. as long as there's problems here, he, as long as there's problems here, he wants to come here and be part, you know, be, be able to help. You know, as long as the children of God are here, as long as there's problems here, he wants to come and help. That's his heart that's, felt. That is from the deepest part of his heart. That's uh, that's really amazing because I think uh, I think this is a hard place to be. I think uh, uh, you know that's that's why we're all here, and, and many of us anyway, is to uh, try to help this place along and uh, uh, you know get it out of the sewer here. Gosh, I mean, we're yeah, just not uh, we're, we're not and doing well, it right. We get a few people working together, we can make a lot of good, great things happen. Uh, one thing I did want to mention to the listeners. And we're going to have to go to the questions, so I'll just be real brief on this one, is we do have uh, some real promising gravity motors, and we'll know more in a month or so. But look, two of them are pretty much ready to release. Uh, we got to do it carefully because we tried it before, and we got zero response. Uh, we're trying to give away a free free energy gravity motor plans and uh, for free. It wasn't even donation basis. And we had it up for about a year and a half, and not one person ordered the plans at all on our website. This is before the website. You, you did. This is back about eight, uh, nine years ago, probably ten years ago. So we've got if if it's free, you know, people think if it's worth nothing, if it costs nothing, it's worth nothing. And so you you got to do it where people are going to get behind it because. Otherwise, you can have the greatest thing in the world if nobody gets behind it. There's nothing. No, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, for example, the cell phone was invented by Nathan Stubblefield, which is a great invention. 
uh, back, and you can look it up online, the listeners, and back, this is uh, by the ministry back uh, over 100 years, 130 years ago, 140 years ago now. It was invented and demonstrated and so on, and it never went anywhere because we couldn't get the right people behind it. Uh, so the people uh, that are listeners and the people of God need to get behind these things to make them happen. Uh, the cell phone wound up taking over 100 years before it actually got out, and, and then the greedy and the corrupt got behind it because they figured out how they could monopolize the whole thing. But originally, right. it would have been free or cheap or really cheap or free, basically. You know, it would have been almost free communication, well, the, way, the way it was designed by the ministry and so on. Well, I think uh, I think uh, we as a um, as a populace of Earth need to shake off this greed thing, and uh, and get with the program because uh, there's so many good things that could happen if uh, if people weren't standing, you know, in a way standing in the way. I know a lot of people view uh, greed as a good thing, um, but I tell you, I, I just see so many ways that it's uh, it's stagnated our growth. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil, and it's not money. People quote that and say money is the root of all evil. No, money can be a tool for good or evil, but uh, it's up to humanity, it's up to each individual if they're surrendered to God or not to use their money to help God and God's kingdom, use their time to help God and God's kingdom, or to use their time in a greedy, self-centered way. And literally, it only takes 300 people working together to make these things happen for all humanity. And, uh, you know, people can consult if they want to know more about that about that plan but uh, anyway so the, the gravity motors are exciting I believe 2011 is the year uh, we've had prophecies about 2011 uh, I believe 2011 is the year we get a gravity motor actually out into the hands of the people and like I say there's there's two for sure maybe three that are just about ready to go two that are ready to go we just got to get it organized properly and the right kind of team in place that has the, the authority and the power of God on them to get this thing in, implemented and in, in use. And they're all simple. They're All three of these are simple, and, that, and they all produce decent, usable amounts of power, high for gravity motors, high power for gravity motors. Uh, and so this is, this is really good. Um, and, we'll, and, you know, it's up. we got to pray about it and seek the Lord more to figure out the exact strategy, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about it, of course, in future meetings and so on. Well, this is a this is a pretty exciting show tonight. I mean, that, this is some pretty big revelations coming out uh, tonight. I think as long as I've been doing the show here, helping broadcast the show, uh, which has been many weeks. I mean, we've actually had quite a number of episodes now. Uh, this is this is pretty big news. I'm pretty impressed. You you kind of surprised me tonight on this one. Well, I think it's been about six months, brother. Uh, we did have a break of about three months, so probably three months of shows or maybe four months of shows now. Uh, so that's that's good. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. It's exciting. Uh, this is like the centennial or what do you want to call it, uh, the the debut of the New Year show. This is the New Year show. So I figured the New Year show, we needed something special. And, of course, we just had Jesus' birthday, and so that's something special for Jesus' birthday, too, for all mankind, you know. So, uh, you know, it isn't, and I, I want to clarify for our listeners, it, you know, December 25th is not the actual Jesus' birthday, but that's the day everybody <laughs> celebrates as if it is. Uh, he was probably born in September or October, most people agree, because of the, you know, the way the Bible describes it all. It doesn't say the month, but, you know, it says uh, conditions and so on, you know, weather conditions and so on. So, but anyway, just so people don't get, some people, they hear you say something like Jesus' birthday, and then they all get mad at you, you know, because they're not, not Jesus' birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, 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 <laughs> it was probably just uh, a way to trick us into buying a bunch of stuff, and so they moved it. There wasn't enough. There wasn't enough uh, capitalism happening in the in the winter, so they moved uh, Jesus' birthday into the winter, and they called it Christmas. And hey, you got to give gifts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's uh, yeah, it, it helped capitalism for sure. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say a little more of that. Oh, yeah. Also, 20, I want to tell everybody, and, and there's another reason 2011 is gonna, is very significant. We have an email with 2011. We also have an email with 2014. We also have an email with 2020, and with, with one T on all three of those. But uh, but the 2011 is the, is the bicentennial or the 200-year anniversary of the ministry from the time Michael Faraday started it. And so that's a significant date that we should do something significant in 2011. And it's also the 300 year anniversary for when Johann Besser made the first gravity motor. So wow. that's a significant date. Yeah, so he made his first one in 1711, uh, first one working. I shouldn't say the first one he made. He built 100 of them or more also. <laughs> Can did. you believe? Can you believe it takes 300, 300 years to get a product out? 
yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, people need to wake up and get start working together to make these things happen. If they leave it up to the greedy commercial people, it'll never get out because the greedy commercial people are making too much money on fossil fuels. So, uh, you know, but it can be introduced in a gradual way where it doesn't upset the establishment and, and uh, you know, too much. Uh, and that's that's what the plan is: is to, is to make it as gentle and kind and healthy as possible for everybody. Um, and you know, anyway, this is this is a 300 year anniversary we're coming up on, uh, and 20 of the, and I don't know, no, I don't know the month or the day on any of these uh, that Faraday started the ministry. I don't know the day or the actually for 40 months. He did work at least three or five years before he got the first. He hasn't been five or something there, but just you know, working, uh, having a lot of stuff. So yeah, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, just a minute. We're getting a little bit of uh, rough audio now. Um, I'm going to uh, change something here, so just just hold right there. Okay, you want to speak again? Yeah, I'm here. Is it helping any, or is it still? Yeah, up? that's better. That's better. Okay, okay good. I have a few questions. Should we move on to those? Or yeah, I'd say let's uh, let's get to some questions. Okay, we got Brother Randy. Uh, how do you want us to pray for the ministry, Brother Randy? Uh, how do you want us to pray for the ministry, Brother Randy? Um, we we need to take authority and stand together for the success of what the ministry is doing and specific. Uh, right now, I guess just pray for wisdom. The, the, uh, James said, "If any man lacks uh, lacks wisdom, let him ask God, for God gives abundantly." We just pray for wisdom to move forward uh, with with these things in God as God leads us. Wisdom to do it right. I'll put it that way. To be successful at uh, helping the planet and these type of things, gravity motors and everything else are working. Uh, so I guess that's a good way to pray. Did you have another thought or an answer on that, brother? I think that's probably uh, I think that's very a wise answer actually. I, I, that's true. I think wisdom would be very very helpful right now. Yeah, amen, amen. And God will give us you know He doesn't give you the whole plan usually. He usually gives you one or two steps. You do those one or two steps, and then He gives you the next one or two steps. And uh, so that's that's the way I usually go. So yeah, we're just we're just trusting God, and we're you know we're still uh, there's still more to do to get ready uh, on these different things. Just, uh, and we got a question for Brother Lidke. Oh, by the way, thank you, Brother Randy, for your question. Thank you, Brother Lidke. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brother Jim. I see a question here from Jim. Thank you for everybody, and thank you for uh, Timothy Martin and his son, Timothy Greg Martin. Thank you very much for all your help with the show. We really appreciate it. People like you. You guys are what makes this all possible. Uh, so Brother Lidke said, have you ever been on the Art Bell show? And I guess he's referring to me. Uh, probably, and uh, the answer is uh, yes. Years and years ago, when it first came out, uh, Art Bell was still doing it. I don't think I don't know if Art Bell was doing it again or not, but uh, I know he had George Story on it for a while. Uh, and we're happy to go on again if anybody has connections there and can get it uh, get it worked out. Uh, it's you know it's, it's exciting stuff. People need to, Art Bell has a huge amount of listeners, and people need to wake up and know what's going on so they can participate in solutions. Uh, did you have a comment on that one, Brother Martin? Uh, well, I say I, I, it's kind of you know Art Bell. I'm I'm not even sure Art Bell's on like he used to be. Um, do you know Do you know if he's still on the air? I don't know. I know George Norrie was doing it for a while. Yeah, George Norrie is the one that uh, that I always uh, listen to. You know, but what's a little what's a little funny about that is um, I think. I think the audience is changing uh, these days because um, Art Bell, I think, was very, very popular before the Internet really kind of uh, displaced that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. now the Internet is sort of the medium of, of people's information and not so much uh, radio like that. Yep, yep. Yeah, so anyway, that's, we're happy to do it. He's still, I'm sure he's still following if he's still doing the show. I think he still is, um, I, I think. I don't know. You know. But anyway, it, it's, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I know it was still in existence last summer because another brother had tried to get, uh, you know, tried to make contact with them and, and so on. So, uh, yeah, so it was still in existence. It's probably still is. So anyway, let's go on to the next question, Jim. 
what was happening last week in the Philippines. Well, we had a lot of, uh, we, we prayed for a lot of people, ministered, people teaching. Uh, as you know, I'm, I'm doing missionary work over here, and there's, a, there's actually a couple people with me doing missionary work. And uh, there were some healings. Uh, I may have mentioned, I think this might have been the week before, uh, a little baby that had fallen, a bad fall on a concrete floor, two, about one year old, missing teeth in the front. And, uh, and then the teeth weren't in action, they were broken off, the two front teeth. The baby had about 30 teeth altogether, 25 or 30 teeth. But the two in the front, because the baby had hit the floor hard, uh, were literally broken off at the gum line. And uh, that was one miraculous feeling that we had, we had here. We prayed for that baby. And uh, the next time I saw him, which was a very short time later, um, his teeth had grown uh, completely out. And, uh, in other words, you could still tell they'd been broken, but they were as long as the others. Uh, they weren't broken at the gum line anymore. The, somehow God, you know, God knows how to do these things. I don't know how to do these things, but God does. God knows how to make them grow out if people will believe. And uh, the baby didn't have any trouble believing, and, and I didn't have any trouble believing. So, so if people can believe, God can do the can, God can do the great works. And uh, so it's kind of good. Uh, and and I, you know, it, it's wonderful to see that kind of thing. But we've seen a lot of miracles. Uh, another baby. Uh, and there are a lot of babies over here. People wonder why I talk about babies. There's a lot of babies over here that need ministering. The, the women are brainwashed, like worse than the United States, and the men too. They don't know how to take care of babies anymore. I mean, you know, the most natural thing in the world is to take care of a baby. You know, the baby, when the time is born, you know, you hold it to your, the woman holds it to her breast and the baby drinks. You know, it's, it's the most natural thing in the world, but they don't know how to do it anymore uh, because of all the brainwashing on TV and uh, they're giving them these fake formulas and all kinds of crazy stuff. So the babies have a lot of problems. But there's another baby that had really bad rashes all over its skin and we prayed for that baby and he was healed and next next morning he was the mother said he was completely fine. I didn't see him but my mother said he was completely healed the next morning. Uh, so you know this kind of thing we see a lot of this. Uh, this next week uh, going to minister it's a short crusade um, and I'll be speaking with some of the tribes. There's actually still tribes that live in the jungle. Uh, I'll be visiting at least one tribe, and so that's what's on the agenda for next week. And uh, and there'll be uh, a couple of uh, healing type meetings. I call them crusades, but Jesus still heals. So, and we'll just uh, be, everybody, you know, pray for wisdom and safety, and uh, we'll take authority over over the devil and command him not to interfere in any way with the ministry or or anything the ministry is trying to do in Jesus' name. So that's another thing we can pray for. And we're probably out of time. We're uh, an hour and about six minutes or so. What do you think, brother? I, yeah, I don't see any more let me, questions. Uh, let, me, let me yell into the, my son and see if there's any, anything else. that. Uh, any more questions or anything? Uh, so we do have maybe another question or two? Yeah. Okay. Well, we can, we can take them. Yeah. And send oh. them. Uh, they haven't showed up on my screen yet. Right, uh, he's going to yell one over here to me. What was that? When are we going to be ready to take this campaign on the road? Uh, depending on which campaign we're talking about, the the healing, the power of God campaign is already going on. It has been going on for about 200 years with this ministry. It has been going on about 2,000 years with, with the ministry as, as a whole since Jesus came. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe he's talking about the uh, the gravity motor. What was it? Gravity motor, yes. This, this, we, we've got to do some more testing when I get back. Uh, so we're looking at about a month or a month and a half. Uh, and then, and there's also, uh, the elders need to get together and agree on the best way to do this. It, it's challenging to get 14 guys to agree on something. Um, <laughs> so that's my job. <laughs> so even when they're all surrendered to God, you know, they, so you gotta, we gotta, gotta get a plan that makes sense, and uh, you know we'll be consulting uh, more with uh, Brother Timothy Martin because we want his input also, and uh, people that have good business sense and a heart for the, for the Lord and a heart for helping humanity. Uh, we we gotta get a plan in place that actually sounds like it might work, and because like I said before, we tried to give away a gravity motor and nobody ordered the plans, nobody, and they were free. It wasn't even a donation request. So obviously that didn't work, uh, you know. So you know, if people think you're just going to give it away and it's going to change. It doesn't work that way. Uh, we've, yeah. we've tried to give stuff away. We've given a whole bunch of stuff away. Um, the ministry is responsible for most of the electrical stuff we're using nowadays, uh, as far as like the responsible. Give, 
Uh, we've helped develop we helped develop computers in the early days. They helped develop lasers. Uh, even the super lasers they have nowadays. We developed 60 cycle. I was giving away under Nikola Tesla. Uh, cell phones we, we developed. Uh, even regular phones we did a lot with those. Um, uh, and people think the incandescent light was invented by. Uh, people think it was invented by uh, Edison, but there were four incandescent light light patented before Edison's patent. He just figured out a way to do it. Uh, that was uh, profitable at a business perspective. In other words, there's always the business end of it, and you know, and then a lot of times it's profit based. And you know, we're not that interested in profit, but if if people don't see something, in other words, if you're just trying to give them away something, it's very difficult to give away things to people. It's uh, they think it will cost nothing, it's worth nothing, and then if you put a donation amount on it, then people say, well, why do I have to donate and all this, you know. It's it's uh it's hard to make everybody out. You just do the best you can with people. So we're gonna pray for wisdom and God will give us we'll get a plan and we'll make it happen. Twenty eleven. The uh twenty eleven. We're gonna we're gonna do our best here. Well I think uh, I think with so much truth coming out in so many different areas, I think uh, I think this is gonna work somehow. I think uh we're gonna be led to uh uh the right way of doing it. We're you know, it's every time I think I know something uh, like I, uh, I, I think I know how something should be. It doesn't turn out that way, and uh, but it always turns out okay. So uh, that's probably the way this is going to turn out. Yeah, amen, amen, amen. Yeah, God will make a way. It'll happen. It, it, it's time. It's fully due time. Uh, okay, let me another see. Question. You got you got another Brother question Randy. over there. Yeah, and this was already answered earlier in the show. Uh, how long will you be? Is asking how long will I be in the Philippines? Uh, missionary work here. Uh, about uh, three, four more weeks, uh, something to that effect. And uh, yeah, so anyway, thank you for your questions, brother Randy. Thank you for your questions, brother Lidke and brother Jim. And uh, shall we? What do you think, brother? Shall we call it tonight? I think we can call it tonight. I'd, I'd like to give out a shout to uh, Brother Litke also because he was helping me uh, troubleshoot some of the audio. He was <laughs> telling me my levels were low and stuff. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs> it's thank hard you, to brother. see anything yeah, from here. Too. We appreciate that. Yeah, Brother Litke is a good guy. Uh, he's going to be helping a little bit with the website and, uh, and maybe the YouTube videos to, to answer. We had so many of them, and I don't even know. How to operate the, you know, it's like an email on YouTube, and so, and John does not operate it, and so, Brother Litsky is going to help us a little bit and see how all that works out. Oh, that's good. Good. Okay, well, I guess, right. uh, I guess we can call it a night. Well, thanks for the uh, wonderful uh, uh, scoops, I guess. This, I mean, that's pretty big information here. I mean, uh, that's awesome. Really amazing. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. It's going to get better. It's, uh, you know, it's, you know, God is good. God has more than we can possibly imagine for us. It's it's fantastic. It's gonna get better. So everybody, just keep your keep your courage up, and uh, God is the solution to every problem we have. Well, I think He's been working overtime along with the angels. I'll Amen. tell you that. Amen. 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 It's it's amazing. He He does the world is as good a shape as it is. It's all because of God and and the family of God working hard for everybody. Okay, well, I guess uh, I guess we'll call it a night, and uh, you can say uh, good night, and I'll uh, I'll take us offline. All right, good night, everybody. God bless. Bye bye.